another month, another update from Project for the Web. Today we're going to take a look at guest access for Project for the Web. Without further ado, let's dive in. In any Microsoft 365 admin center, you can find all your active users. Now, you might not have the access or the, you might not have the same access as I do in my own tenant. If your organization allows guest access to your environments, for instance, to communicate through Microsoft Teams or do other things together, there's a good chance that you already are familiar with the setup of external users within the system. For this example, I've added my Projectum mail account to the project corner environment. So this is an external user that's going to access projects through Project for the Web. Now we're already familiar with our environment because if you have been following me around this is the environment called Project Home and Project Home gives us access to all our recent projects the ones that are shared with me created by me from different locations uh, from different sources and so on. I'm logged in as my own user within the Project Corner environment so I have full access because this user has licenses to accompany the work that I'm doing. So a brief teaser what's coming in May update I think is we already have the option to start projects from templates. So this is going to be very interesting to cover in the next video. But let's start a blank project and let's call this the guest access project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be the owner of this project and I'm going to share this project with the elo at projectum.com mail account. That is the external resource on my tenant. So I'm going to find myself and as you can always already see, there's two people here. There is Erik van Herk and there's the Erik van Herk guest account. Now this guest account can also be a project manager in your organization. There's one caveat that we'll come back to later. And I'm going to add two tasks to the schedule. So the first one obviously is going to go to myself. And of course I can add Miriam as well. And adding Miriam again will give me the option to create a group or just assign a resource. So for this, I'm actually going to create that group because that group will be also available for me as a guest user. So create and assign. So now we have a group and that group contains two resources. Now for the second task, I want to share this with the external resource. And before I do that, I want to let you know how to access one of those external uh, environments. As you can see, the projectcorner.onmicrosoft.com is the domain that I have claimed for the work with the project corner. So this environment is accessible when you add this domain name to the end of your project.microsoft.com slash. That's the easiest way to approach this as an external resource. There's an additional option to change environment and log off and log on again, but I don't find that very intuitive. So I would highly recommend you access this system, um, access this project for the web environment from a external uh, organization through the use of the domain. And we also have the new button here and what happens if I don't have a license, I'll get that prompt here. And this is the catch that I was mentioning earlier. If a resource is an external resource to the system, to the tenant, that means that that user doesn't have the license to create projects in this tenant. Even though a resource might have project plan one, plan three, or plan five even, licenses on their own tenant, Microsoft needs you to have a license within the current tenant that you're accessing. And I don't have anything shared with me. 
but the moment that I assign this to the resource that I have available here as a guest, I'll be able to select that resource here and that will that resource now shows up in the other people group of the private channel. So Eric and Miriam, who are part of the organization, are already members, and that's by design. However, an external resource is automatically added to the other people. Now, it's a little bit different on the blog article, so I needed to dig in, and thanks to Paul Mather, and his excellent blog post that I have that I have a link for in the description was able to tell me that the external resource is not automatically added as a member to a private channel. And in order to do that, we actually need to go to Outlook. So let's head on over to Outlook. And here I have a message telling me, welcome to the guest access project group. And this is a group specifically created when I added Miriam to that team. From here, I can click on view group in Outlook. And once that group loads, I can specify, I can have a closer look at more details for this group, such as um, about members, email, files, all the things you would expect for a group to contain. And there's an option to add members. You can look at all current members and search for them here and you can click on add members. Now, because your tenant doesn't know all emails from all external resources you could ever imagine, you'll need to use the email address of the external resource. And here I find that guest resource that we added to our project. So here's just a short warning that tells you that, okay, this is a guest resource and they'll have limited access to group resources and that's exactly what I want if I click on add now and close one additional member has been added let's navigate back to our guest access project and let's refresh the page and now we see that there's three group members on the private guest access project with this access to the group I, as an external resource, now have access to the project as well. So let's see that in another browser. This is the browser that we saw earlier, right? Where we have the project.microsoft.com name, as well as the domain name that we are trying to access as an external resource. So let's refresh the page and see if there's anything for me. And just like magic, we see our guest access project here. Let's click on it. And because I don't have any project licenses, this is a read only. Um, this is a read only project for me. If you want the external resource to actually partake in the project and actually update the project themselves, you will need to require, you will need to add a P1 license or a P3 or P5 license to that external resource within your own tenant. So that means that if the external resource already has a project license externally at their own tenant, that doesn't apply to this external shared resource project. There's a nice little check mark telling me that this cell is read only. I can obviously hide columns, add columns, see what information is in here. I can navigate to the board, but I cannot drag and drop as we expect for any normal user of project with a license. There's a timeline and that also only contains zoom options, filter options, but nothing specifically can be added or changed for this but I do have access to the project and it looks good. And every change that I do as a project manager, such as adding a milestone, and applying dependencies, 
trickles down nicely to my external resource. As you can see, the milestone is here. And in the timeline, we can see the dependencies. There's practically no latency in the changes that we do on our own tenant as the owner of the project or what the guest access resource sees. Okay, so breaking news right at the end of the video, Brian Smith found out what the issue is with the guest access to our project group. It seems that there's a tenant level security setting that isn't set on my tenant. And he mentioned that it wasn't set on his own tenant as well as a couple of other people that didn't have that access. Now, what kind of access that is, I'm not 100% sure, but it has to do with external access and that Project for the Web doesn't know how to deal with that. So on this link, if that turns up as a blank, then your tenant has that same issue and you'll need to work with that workaround or you'll need to have your tenant admin set a couple of commandlets in PowerShell. Now I'm no PowerShell wizard, so I wouldn't know what to do exactly, but on this link, you'll find out more. So that's it. Some last minute breaking news at the end of the video. I already recorded the rest, but I didn't want to leave you out with it. I didn't want to leave you without this. So stay tuned for our next video and thanks for watching. And if you want to be updated on new features in Project for the Web, make sure to subscribe.